we are witnessing the end of an era. At least we should be. Why do I think so? Because if we all watched the game yesterday as I watched the game, you saw something that you couldn't miss even if you tried family, Klay Thompson's atrocious performance. Now, the big three, Klay Thompson, Steph Curry, Draymond Green. But how long can it last when you're looking at numbers like this? Last night, Klay was 0 of 10, but his last four playoff games or play-in games included 3 of 19, 3 of 12, 3 of 11. I'm wondering, and I got to head to the desk to ask the family this one. Slick, this is fascinating mm. because I don't want anybody to miss you at home how big a deal the conversation we're about to have is. Usually you know when a dynasty's over. Yeah. When we saw the Magic in the 90s lose to the Bulls, okay, it's done. We knew the Lakers were going to end with Kobe and Shaq. They had talked about it. They lost to the Pistons. Okay, it's done. You knew the Spurs were going to end to some degree because the Golden State Warriors were going to take the mantle. Okay, they're done. Mm -hmm. The Miami Heat that Joy Taylor got to witness firsthand, you knew they were going to end because the Spurs broke it up. Okay, it's done. But this big three is interesting. Because they're not losing in the NBA Finals like the Mag like the Lakers did or like the Lakers did or like the Spurs did or like the Heat did. Yeah. They're losing in a play-in game. Mm. So we're not really realizing just how big a deal the conversation we are about to have is. This is huge. Probably a top five dynasty in the history of the game of basketball. And it could be, it should be, in my mind, over. But Slick, you know basketball better than anybody on national yeah. television. Is it time for the Warriors to break up the big three? No, it's time to reset the expectation that they're going to continue to play for championships. Look, they're in a difficult spot where to break it up and the idea that you're going to break it up and then you're going to continue to play for championships just isn't realistic under the current dynamics of the NBA. So it's a matter of do you maintain the big three and do you try to cobble and put pieces around them? And, and, I, and I would push back a little bit. I think we saw the same thing with San Antonio toward their end. They kept the big three together. They weren't winning championships or even contending for championships right to the end. They were still winning a lot of regular season games, but they weren't making deep runs. We didn't look at them as threats, or maybe we talked about them in threats, and then, whoa, they got knocked out in the first round, or they got knocked out in the second round. So I, I just, if I saw a path to which you could take some of these pieces and move them and reconstitute the Warriors, and then they would be playing for championships again, then I would say, yes, by all means, break it up, keep it going forward. But I don't see a path to that. So your choice is, we're either gonna just tear it all the way down, which means not just moving, because I think what we're talking about is like moving Draymond Green, not bringing back Clay Thompson. Like, you can't replace them with better pieces the only way you do that is if you move Steph Curry as well. So, so, so like, really quick, you saying uh, don't break it up and play for fun? That's what it sounded like. I, I am saying, yes, I'm saying enjoy, <laughs> enjoy these three still being together. Okay. Enjoy, uh, enjoy the fact that they are still going to be competitive. Mm -hmm. They can still, look, what we're forgetting, they I think, what we're jumping team. over is how, is how messed up the, the word that Steph Curry used with me when we met in Portland was how random this season was. You had Draymond Green getting suspended for a dozen games. You had Klay Thompson have to make the adjustment of going to the bench. You had Chris Paul, an arch enemy, being introduced into the team and finding a way to incorporate him. You had an assistant coach have a fatal heart attack a day after Draymond Green came back into the team. Steph Curry had to deal with an ankle injury. Like, you had so many things happen with this team that kicked it sideways. The idea that this is what they now are, that they're a 10th seed, I think is, is not being, is not giving all, all that they went through this season enough credit. Joy, where do you stand on the matter? It's a, a huge, 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 huge deal, huge conversation. Mm. A big answer awaits us. Is it time to break up the big three? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. I had a, a, a <laughs> different answer before Rick laid all that out. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm like thinking back to dynasties and how they fall apart and what they look like, and what's what organizations owe players like this, and nothing lasts forever, and we very often see players on different teams than their dynasties, the dynasty that they yep. were a part of. Yep. I can't see a world where Steph Curry is playing for a different team. Agreed. I don't like that world. I, I, 
Yeah. But then I can't see the Warriors with just Steph Curry. So I, I'm, I'm Steph Curry can't see that. I, I agree. So I'm I'm sort of in the in the middle of it where I don't necessarily think that they need to blow it up or or, or break apart the big three and send Clay somewhere and send Draymond somewhere and try and find a new way to put together a championship winning team around Steph Curry. The more I say that, the less it makes sense. Mm. So I do think that they need to retool. They need to take a deep look at the at the roster, at the role players, at what their future looks like, what are the options here, who do we need to bring back, who do we need to go out and look for, is there another move out there on the market that we could potentially be in play for. And I don't like the idea of playing for fun, but I also think that expectations need to be realistic. And we often do this, we do this a lot with a lot of great players, where just because they were once at some point where every single year we expected them to be in the final, okay, who, who are the Warriors playing this year? No. But we also have brains that can process that time is a real thing and that no dynasties last forever. So we don't have the expectation of them competing for a championship every single year. We just don't. We yeah. don't. We yeah. actually do so not. So then what is it? I'm confused. Oh, I'm, conf I'm, you can I'm confused. And the only reason I'm confused is because I'm, I'm curious to like, well, what are y'all saying? Because it's over. we're saying. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying <laughs> that you two are saying. greedy. That's what I'm saying. That's fair. But I, 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 well, let me elaborate on my confusion in case y'all at home too are confused. Because it sounds like we don't want the Warriors to be playing for fun. But I feel as though the advice that you all are lending is very much so a, hey, play for fun, lower the expectations. Y'all aren't going to be able to compete, but don't break up the big three I, because that's why I'm I don't think that it's I'm not confused. that they won't be able to compete, but competing for a championship and competing are two different things. Yep. And we hold lots of teams to very, very much lower standards than we hold Steph Curry and the Warriors to all the time. We, we think it's nice that this team has this, has this run, that this team has won a couple playoff series. And, and we, we really never move them into, well, they should be competing for a championship now. So we, we have the capacity to have realistic expectations for organizations all the time. Not for, not for people that accomplish what they have accomplished, though. That, that's my only thing. If this is Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat, sure. sure. Hey, these sure. dudes have won four of these things. Bah, and right. now we saying just four of these things, let's go back to being regular. Mm -hmm. And let's get back into the, into the, into the play-in game. This has been three out of five seasons they have missed the playoffs. Did we watch that game last night? We did. Yeah. Because them young boys was a thousand steps faster than the Golden State Warriors. Okay. I'm watching the game like, I, I was on TV yesterday and I said, no, Slick, do not blow this thing up. Yeah. Keep the, when I watched that basketball game yesterday, the Warriors cannot compete with them three on the court. Them young fellas was a step ahead of them. Ripping Steph, Clay couldn't get open, he trying to come up. That, it was just pure dominance without two of the King's best players, and you almost got routed by 20 plus yeah. in a must win game. Mm. So for me, they have four championships together. Mm -hmm. There is no plan for fun. Every time the Golden State Warriors put their jersey on, when, and the season starts, it's about winning a championship. How can we get that done? With this big three that they have had with a lot of success, it is not going to happen. What can we do to be able to help Steph Curry? Because he's one of the few ones on that team still playing at a high level, even though he's up there in age. But how he, can we help him and put a, a, together a team to help them win a championship? If, if Steph was all that, then why wasn't Steph all that last night? We'll get there. I mean, we'll get, we'll get, we'll there. get there. Yeah. I mean, his, his other friends play worse than him. And, and by the way, by the way, you, you're the one who said that they're, they're playing for fun. I think they're playing for a little bit more than that. We get to see them see how good they can be as they shut this down, as they go forward. And is it is mean? a matter of... Well, what, see, what, see what, hold on real quick. I, we're just translating, in my mind, we are translating into athlete speech what we're hearing from you. Yeah. You did not say the Warriors are playing for fun. I would never say that if y'all are just now tuning in. You didn't say that. But to say that, like, the Warriors should lower their expectations and the expectations should no longer be competing for championships, I interpret that as, oh, so I'm just out here running and jumping. Yeah, no. That's how I interpret The Warriors that. should not. The Warriors should not. But that's what it is. We all should. Like, there's an expectation now that they're supposed to play for championships every year. What, how do we put that, do we put that expectation on any other franchise? At least, be, more. at least be in the playoffs but to it, have a but, chance. But, but, but like time and wear and tear and role players' performance and all of the other factors that happened this year also matter. They do. Like, yeah, true. What, what happens true. 
several years ago is important. So when you change what's it? happening now also matters. So that's what I suggest, though. If right. time matters, then let's change time but because the players what, what, are old. Changing time to who? So to you're saying just uh, get rid of Clay, get rid of Draymond, and then build a championship team around, around Steph. Steph Curry? I, I agree with what Charles Thank Barkley sure. said yesterday on the broadcast. He was like, Clay can get paid less, but he ain't gonna get better. Right. So right. Th th that's my dilemma. Like, and, and let me try to speak of it like this. I hold greats to yeah. great standards. And I believe that the Warriors have a top five dynasty in the history of basketball behind probably the 80s Lakers, the 90s Bulls, the Spurs from 2000 to 2014. You can say the early Lakers as well. You want to bring up the heel, whatever you think. And I'm sure I've missed several, maybe the Celtics in there as well. But I believe that the Warriors have a top five dynasty. Whenever those three plus their coach step on the court, I expect greatness. Whenever Tom Brady and Bill Belichick stepped on a football field, I didn't care about the age. Yeah. I've seen them do great things. Whenever Pop and Duncan was on that basketball court, I've, I've seen great things. I never, ever, ever thought I would see Tony Parker in another uniform. I'm yep. a Dallas Mavericks yep. fan. Tony Parker ended so many dreams and hopes of mine. But then I was like, wait, is he playing for Charlotte? Yeah. Is, he, is that so, Tony Parker? So, so it could happen for Clay. You know what we're talking about is, is we're, talk, we're really talking about the horse is already out of the barn. And we're, and because they had a chance to reset this on the fly. They mm -hmm. had the number one pick for James Wiseman. That didn't work. You had two other lottery picks in Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody. Those guys have not become the players that you would hope you would get. They had the opportunity to hit the reset button. Whichever way you did it, whether you took those picks and you traded or you drafted more wisely or whatever you did, the opportunity to hit the reset and push the, and, and extend the dynasty that opportunity was already there and wasted. Yeah, so the idea now. that you're going to do it now by moving, I mean, we're not the only ones who watched last of night. Of course. The rest of the league saw Klay Thompson last yeah. night. The rest of the team, saw, uh, the rest of the league saw Draymond Green get three rebounds in 35 minutes. I got, a, I got a question for the left side of the table based <laughs> on what you're saying. I'll start with you, James, and enjoy. Very interested in you rolling after that. Is there, though, a little bit of dissension because of the old guard, new guard? I remember talking to uh, the camp of um, Kaminga, if you will. And the Warriors got the young cats, and they got the old heads. Mm -hmm. And the old heads can never really materialize. The young cats can never really materialize so long as the old heads are there. Reason I want to go left side of the table, James Jones, I very much so think about the Packers. Mm. Packers, young wide receiver core. Yeah, we just this did. year, they did their thing. Yes, they did. But when Aaron Rodgers was there, there was tension. Because you had old head Aaron Rodgers, mm. old head Bakhtiari, old head Randall Cobb. The young boys can't really be young boys. Yeah. But then Jordan Love came in and all the young boys got to do their thing together. Did the Packers win a championship this year? No, they did not. But did they have a great year, upset the Cowboys, and do they look like they're on the brink of the horizon? Absolutely. If you would have asked a Packers fan, is it ludicrous to get rid of Aaron Rodgers, maybe the greatest Green Bay Packer in the history of the organization? They would say yes. But to me, James and Joy, there's something about let all of the new blood and Steph, because Steph just is, 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 he's a deity. Let all of the new blood and Steph grow together. I agree, because you're trying to win championships. So however you got to rotate pieces, whatever you have to do, you're trying to win championships. It ain't no play for fun. I was, when I was with the Green Bay Packers, no shot, no, no, no shot at my Raiders. When I was with the Green Bay Packers, from 2007 <laughs> to 2013, every single year, roster-wise and everything, we had a chance to go win a Super Bowl. That's what you've seen. That's what you felt in that locker room. First it was Brett. Then it was Aaron. You had a chance. Then I went to the Raiders, mm. and I said, Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. this roster we have, we not winning nothing. And I was out there trying to do my best. I always felt if I got the ball, we would win. But at the same time, I'm like, team-wise, we're not built to win no championship. Just don't get hurt, JJ. Mm -hmm. Just don't get hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, see next year. So for me, it ain't no fun in that. There, there, there is no fun in just, hey, we out here. Uh, put your jersey on. Let's go out here and, and, and hope and wish. Ain't no fun in that. These dudes have won championships. It's about winning championships. So you got to blow this thing up and try to regroup and go win another championship. But to Slick's point, what are you getting for Clay and Draymond? 
Like if you're talking about building a championship around a championship team around Steph Curry, you need to be able to have the pieces and assets that are able so to So maybe do that. it's maybe it's them young picks. Maybe it's the Kamingas and all that that you deal and okay. try to go get you a big okay. time number two player with Steph Curry. Yeah, but that's not blowing up the three uh, three. And I and here's well, the thing. Well, Steph ain't so, going nowhere. When I say blow up, I mean the big three. Understood. But you said you went to the Raiders and you saw, oh, I I can't win with this. It's championship. Yeah. Steph, Clay, and Dre still believe, still believe this year, in spite of everything that happened, you know what? We can still get it done. Now, you can question whether they're in their right mind or whether they're being sentimental or whatever it might be, but it's not like Steph or any of those guys are looking around and going, we, don't, we, we can't get it done. Question for you. I don't know if I believe that. Now, you know Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Steph Curry not in, in socially we've exchanged conversation. I don't know if I believe that because I don't know if Steph can go back and watch the tape. Yeah. I don't know if Steph can be like, Clay went 0 for 10. Then he went 3 for 19. Mm -hmm. Then he went 3 for 12. Then he went 3 for 11. In the last four playoff and play-in mm -hmm. games. Mm -hmm. as, as Steph loves Clay, And love isn't just like blinding, it's deceiving. Yeah. So, he ain't gonna say it, but I just don't know if I believe you. I, I think Steph knows I cannot win like this. No. I don't, I think he knows, he can't say it, and I don't think he'll ever say it. And maybe it's head knowledge and not yet heart knowledge, but I don't think Steph truly believes he can win like this. I think what has changed, what changed it was the way they won the 21-22 championship. Because the Warriors had fallen off a cliff. It mm -hmm. was, the, 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 the dynasty was supposed to be over. And okay. was over for two years. And they weren't the favorite. They weren't the favorite going in into the 21-22 uh, postseason. And then they win a ring. Yeah, and so also when you do... Have to get a bucket, too. Well, okay, but, but I'm just saying, look at the pieces that came. Andrew Wiggins had never won yeah, anything. Yeah. Jordan it was Poole surprising. had never won anything. It was very surprising, like, like yes. The, the idea that, hey, our culture, if we bring the right guys into our culture... We can be champions. That is, true. that is true. The fact that they believe that, I understand why they do because they just did it two years ago where you're looking at it and going, they brought guys in who weren't champions who suddenly became champions. Maybe if we can just get the right one or two more guys and we don't have all of the chaos and issues and tragedy that we had this season, maybe there's one more there for us. Subscribe here to get the latest from Speak and go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.